Confessio Fraternitatis ad Eruditos Europae. The Confession of the Rosicrucian Fraternity addressed to the learned of Europe. Here, gentle reader, you will now find incorporated in this our confession 37 reasons of our purpose and intention, all of which, according to your pleasure, you may seek out and compare together, considering within yourself if they are sufficient to allure you. Truly, it requires no small pains to induce anyone to believe what is not presently visible, but when it shall be revealed in the full blaze of day, I suppose we should all be ashamed of such questionings. And as we do now securely call the Pope Antichrist, which was formerly a capital offence in every place, so we know certainly that what we here keep secret we shall in the future thunder forth with uplifted voice, which, dear reader, desire with all your heart that it may happen most speedily, as we earnestly hope. Fratres R.C. Chapter 1 Whatever you have heard, O people, concerning our fraternity by the trumpet sound of the farmer R.C., do not think lightly of it or suspect it mere fantasy. It is Jehovah who, seeing how the world is falling to decay and near to its end, does hasten it again to its beginning, inverting the course of nature, and so what previously had been sought with great pains and constant labor, he lays open now to those thinking of no such thing, offering it to the willing and thrusting it on the reluctant, that it may bring about that good which will smooth the troubles of human life and break the violence of unexpected blows of fortune. But to the ungodly, that which will augment their sins and their punishments. Although we believe ourselves to have sufficiently unfolded to you in the farmer the nature of our order, wherein we follow the will of our most excellent father, nor can by any be suspected of heresy, nor of any attempt against the commonwealth, we hereby do condemn the East and the West, meaning the Pope and Mahomet, for their blasphemies against our Lord Jesus Christ, and offer to the chief head of the Roman Empire our prayers, secrets, and great treasures of gold. Yet we have thought it good for the sake of the learned to add somewhat more to this, and make a better explanation, if there be anything too deep, hidden, and set down over dark in the farmer, or for certain reasons altogether omitted, whereby we hope the learned will be more attracted to us and easier to approve our counsel. Chapter 2 Concerning the amendment of philosophy, we have, as much as at present it is needful, declared that the same is altogether weak and faulty. While many, I know not how, allege that philosophy is sound and strong, to us it is certain that she fetches her last breath. But as commonly even in the same place where a new disease breaks forth, nature discovers a remedy against the same, so amidst so many infirmities of philosophy there do appear the right means and unto our fatherland sufficiently offered where she may become sound again and new or renovated may appear to a renovated world. No other philosophy have we than that which is the head of all the faculties, sciences and arts, which, if we behold our age, contains much of theology and medicine, but little of jurisprudence, which searches heaven and earth with exquisite analysis, or, to speak briefly upon it, which sufficiently manifests the microcosm man, about which if some of the more orderly in the number of the learned shall respond to our fraternal invitation, they shall find among us far other and greater wonders than those they heretofore did believe, marvel at, and profess. Chapter 3 For this reason, to declare briefly our meaning in this, it is only right for us to labor carefully that the surprise of our challenge may be taken from you to show plainly that such secrets are not lightly esteemed by us, 
and not to spread an opinion abroad among the vulgar that the story concerning them is a foolish thing. For it is not absurd to suppose many are overwhelmed with the conflict of thought which is occasioned by our unhoped-for graciousness to those who do not yet know the wonders of the Sixth Age, or who, by reason of the course of the world, esteem the things to come to be like the present, and, hindered by the obstacles of their age, live in no other way in the world other than as men blind, who, in the light of noon, discern nothing and perceive only by feeling. Chapter 4 Now, concerning the first part, we hold that the meditations of our Christian Father on all subjects which from the creation of the world have been invented, brought forth, and propagated by human ingenuity through God's revelation, or through the service of angels or spirits, or through the sagacity of understanding, or through the experience of long observation, are so great that if all books should perish, and by God's almighty sufferance, all writings and all learning should be lost, yet posterity will be able thereby to lay a new foundation of sciences and to erect a new citadel of truth, which perhaps would not be so hard to do as if one should begin to pull down and destroy the old ruinous building, then enlarge the forecourt, afterwards bring light into the private chambers, and then change the doors, staples, and other things according to our intention. Therefore, it must not be expected that newcomers will attain at once all our weighty secrets, they must proceed step by step from the smaller to the greater and must not be slowed by difficulties. For this reason, should we not with all our hearts rest and remain in the only truth which men seek through so many erroneous and crooked ways, if it had pleased God to enlighten for only us the sixth candelabrum? Would it not be sufficient for us to fear neither hunger, poverty, diseases, nor age? Would it not be an excellent thing to live always so as if you had lived from the beginning of the world and should still live to the end of it? So to live in one place that neither the people which dwell beyond the Ganges could hide anything, nor those which live in Peru might be able to keep secret their counsels from you? Would it not be an excellent thing to read in one only book and be able to discern, understand, and remember whatever is in all other books which have ever been, are now, or ever will be, and all that can be learned from them? Would it not be marvellous to sing so that instead of stony rocks you could draw pearls, instead of wild beasts you could call spirits, and instead of Pluto, you could soften the mighty princes of the world. O oh, people, God's counsel is far otherwise, who has concluded now to increase and enlarge the number of our fraternity, which we with such joy have undertaken, as we have so far obtained this great treasure without our merits, any hope or expectation, and we intend with the like fidelity to put the same in practice, that neither the compassion nor pity of our own children, which some of us in the fraternity have, will draw us from it, because we know these unhoped-for goods cannot be inherited, nor by chance be obtained. Chapter 5 if there is anybody now on the opposing side who will complain of our lack of discretion, that we offer our treasures so freely and indiscriminately, and do not instead regard more the godly, wise, or princely persons over the common people, with him we cannot wholly disagree, because the accusation is not without some merit. However, we strongly affirm that we have by no means made common property of our arcana, Although the farmer was sent out in five languages within the ears of the vulgar, both because, as we well know, the words we speak will not move those who are unworthy through their own lack of depth, and because the worth of those who shall be accepted into our fraternity will not be measured by their idle curiosity, but by the rule and pattern of our revelations. A thousand times the unworthy may clamour, a thousand times they may present themselves, 
Yet God has commanded our ears that they should hear nothing from the unworthy, and has so compassed us about with his clouds, that to us his servants no violence can be done. And because of this we are no longer seen by human eyes, unless they have received strength borrowed from the eagle. It has been necessary that the farmer should be set forth in every one's mother tongue, so that no one should be excluded from the knowledge of our presence, even those who may not be well educated, but God has not excluded from the happiness of our fraternity. The fraternity is divided into degrees, in a manner similar to those who dwell in Damkar, who have a far different political order from the other Arabians, only men of great understanding govern there, and who, by the king's permission, make particular laws. By this example, the future government will also be instituted in Europe, according to the description set down by our Christianly father, when that time shall come to pass, which must be coming, when our trumpet shall resound with full voice and with no deceptions of meaning, when, namely, those things of which a few now whisper and darken with enigmas, shall openly fill the earth, even as, after many secret irritations of pious people against the Pope's tyranny, and after timid reproof, he with great violence and by a great onset was cast down from his seat and abundantly trodden underfoot, whose final fall is reserved for an age when he shall be torn in pieces with nails, and a final groan shall end his ass's braying, which, as we know, is already manifest to many learned men in Germany, as their tokens and secret congratulations bear witness. Chapter 6 we could here relate and declare completely what has happened since the year 1378 when our Christian father was born, what alterations he had seen in the world in the 106 years of his life, what he left after his happy death to be attempted by our fathers and by us. But brevity, which we do observe, will not permit at this present to make rehearsal of it. It is enough for those who do not despise our declaration to have touched upon it, thereby to prepare the way for their more close union and association with us. Truly, to whom it is permitted to behold, read, and afterward to teach himself those great characters which the Lord God has inscribed upon the world's mechanism, and which he repeats through the mutations of empires, such a man is already ours, though as yet unknown to himself. And as we know he will not neglect our invitation, so in like manner we abjure all deceit, for we promise that no man's uprightness and hopes shall deceive him who shall make himself known unto us under the seal of secrecy and desire our familiarity. But to the false and to impostors and to those who seek other things than wisdom, we witness by these presentations publicly, we cannot be hurt by them, nor be known to them without the will of God, but they shall certainly be partakers of that terrible punishment spoken of in our farmer, and their impious designs shall fall back upon their own heads, while our treasures shall remain untouched until the lion arises and asks to use them, and will receive and employ them for the establishment of his kingdom. Chapter 7 One thing must be established by us clearly here, that God has decreed to the world before her end, which after this presently shall ensue, an influx of truth, light, and grandeur, such as he commanded should accompany Adam from paradise and sweeten the misery of man as a result of which all falsehood will cease, darkness and bondage, which little by little with the great globe's revolution has crept into the arts, works and governments of men, darkening the greater part of them. From this has proceeded that innumerable diversity of persuasions, falsities and heresies, which makes choice difficult to the wisest men, seeing on the one part they were hindered by the reputation of philosophers, and on the other by the facts of experience, which if, as we trust, it can be removed, and instead of all this a single and self-same rule is instituted, then there will indeed remain thanks to those who have taken pains to do this, 
but the sum of the so great work shall be attributed to the blessedness of our age. As we now confess that many high intelligences by their writings will be a great furtherance to this reformation which is to come, so do we by no means arrogate to ourselves this glory, as if such a work were only imposed on us, but we testify with our Saviour Christ that sooner shall the stones rise up and offer their service than there shall be any want of executors of God's counsel. Chapter 8 God indeed has already sent messengers which should testify his will, to wit, some new stars which have appeared in Serpentarius and Cygnus, the constellations the snake-bearer and the swan, the which powerful signs of a great council show forth how for all things which human ingenuity discovers, God calls upon his hidden knowledge, as likewise the book of nature, though it stands open truly for all eyes, can be read or understood by only a very few. As in the human head there are two organs of hearing, two of sight and two of smell, but only one of speech, and it is vain to expect speech from the ears or hearing from the eyes, so there have been ages which have seen, others which have heard, others again that have smelled and tasted. Now there remains that in a short and swiftly approaching time, honor should be likewise given to the tongue, that what formerly saw, heard, and smelled shall finally speak, after the world shall have slept away the intoxication of her poisoned and stupefying chalice, and with an open heart, bare head, and naked feet, shall merrily and joyfully go forth to meet the sun rising in the morning. Chapter 9 These characters and letters, as God has here and there incorporated them in the sacred scriptures, he has also imprinted them most manifestly on the wonderful work of creation, on the heavens, the earth, and on all beasts, so that as the mathematician predicts eclipses, so we prognosticate the obscurations of the church and how long they shall last. From these letters we have borrowed our magic writing, and from this have made for ourselves a new language in which the nature of things is expressed, so that it is no wonder that we are not so eloquent in other tongues, least of all in this Latin, which we know to be by no means in agreement with that of Adam and of Enoch, but to have been contaminated by the confusion of Babel. Chapter 10 but this also must by no means be omitted, that while there are yet some eagle's feathers in our way which hinder our purpose, we do suggest to all the sole, only, assiduous and continual study of the sacred scriptures. For he that takes all his pleasures in these will know that he has prepared for himself an excellent way to come into our fraternity. For this is the whole sum of our laws, that as there is not a character in that great miracle of the world which has not a claim on the memory, so those are nearest and most like us, who do make the Bible the rule of their life, the end of all their studies, and the compendium of the universal world, from whom we require not that it should be continually in their mouth, but that they should appropriately apply its true interpretation to all ages of the world, for it is not our custom so to debase the divine oracle, that while there are innumerable expounders of the same, some adhere to the opinions of their party, some make sport of scripture as if it were a tablet of wax to be indifferently made use of by theologians, philosophers, doctors, and mathematicians. It is our task to bear witness that from the beginning of the world there has not been given to man a more excellent, admirable, and wholesome book than the Holy Bible. Blessed is he who possesses it, more blessed is he who reads it, most blessed of all is he who truly understands it, while he is most like to God who both understands and obeys it. Chapter 11 now, what was said in the farmer through animosity toward impostors against the transmutation of metals and the supreme medicine of the world, 
We desire to be so understood that this so great a gift of God we do in no manner dismiss, but as it does not always bring with it the knowledge of nature, while our knowledge brings forth both that and an infinite number of other natural miracles, it is right that we be rather earnest to attain to the knowledge of philosophy, nor tempt excellent wits to the tincture of metals sooner than to the observation of nature. He must be insatiable, whom neither poverty, diseases, nor danger can any longer reach, who, as one raised above all men, has rule over that which anguishes, afflicts, and pains others, yet will give himself again to idle things, will build, make wars, and domineer, because he has of gold sufficient, and of silver an inexhaustible fountain. God judges far otherwise, who exalts the lowly and casts the proud into obscurity. To the silent he sends his angels to hold speech with them, but the babblers he drives into the wilderness, which is the judgment due to the Roman impostor who now pours his blasphemies with open mouth against Christ, nor yet in the full light by which Germany has detected his caves and subterranean passages will abstain from lying, that thereby he may fulfill the measure of his sin and be found worthy of the axe. Therefore, one day it will come to pass that the mouth of this viper shall be stopped and his triple crown shall be brought to naught, of which things more fully when we shall have met together. Chapter 12 For conclusion of our confession, we must earnestly admonish you that you cast away, if not all, then certainly most, of the worthless books of pseudo-chemists, to whom it is a great joke to apply the most holy trinity to vain things, or to deceive men with monstrous symbols and enigmas, or to profit by the curiosity of the credulous. Our age has produced many like this, one of the greatest being a stage player, a man with sufficient ingenuity for imposition, such does the enemy of human welfare mingle among the good seed, thereby to make the truth more difficult to be believed, which in herself is simple and naked, while falsehood is proud, haughty, and coloured with a luster of seeming godly and humane wisdom. You that are wise must avoid such books, and have recourse to us, who do not seek your money, but offer to you most willingly our great treasures." We do not hunt after your goods with invented lying tinctures, but desire to make you partakers of our goods. We may communicate in parables, but we invite you to the clear and simple explanation of all secrets. We seek not to be received by you, but call you to our more than kingly houses and palaces, by no motion of our own, but as, if you are still unaware, we are forced to by the Spirit of God, commanded by the testament of our most excellent Father, and impelled by the occasion of this present time. Chapter 13 what do you think, therefore, O people, seeing that we sincerely confess Christ, execrate the Pope, devote ourselves to the true philosophy, lead a worthy life, and daily call, entreat, and invite many more into our fraternity, and for whom the same light of God likewise appears? Do you not consider, having pondered the gifts which you have, having measured your understanding in the word of God, and having weighed the imperfection and inconsistencies of all the arts, you may at length in the future deliberate with us upon their remedy, cooperate in the work of God, and be serviceable to the constitution of your time. On which work these prophets will follow, that all those goods which nature has dispersed in every part of the earth shall at one time and altogether be given to you, tanquam in centro solis et lunae. Then you shall be able to expel from the world all those things which darken human knowledge and hinder action, such as the vain astronomical epicycles and eccentric circles. Chapter 14 You, however, 
for whom it is likely to try anything out of curiosity upon hearing about it, or who are dazzled by the shine of gold, or who, though now upright, might be led away by such unexpected great riches into a foppish, idle, luxurious, and pompous life, do not disturb our sacred silence by your clamor, but think that although there is a medicine which might fully cure all diseases, yet those whom God wishes to test or to chastise shall not be abetted by such an opportunity, so that if we were able to enrich and instruct the whole world and liberate it from innumerable hardships, yet shall we never be manifested unto any man unless God should favor it. It shall be so far from him who thinks to be partaker of our riches against the will of God, that he shall sooner lose his life in seeking us than attain happiness by finding us. Fraternitas R.C.